from Carnegie Studios in Longmont, Colorado, it's Puppet News. Good evening. I'm Herman Hansen, and I'm ethnically ambiguous. Iranda Lehrer has once again been abducted by aliens and will not be joining us this week. We all anxiously await her return, safe, sound, and probe-free. Here are this week's stories. Dangling tax credits and rebates in his drive to fight climate change, President Joe Biden wants you to trade your gas-burning car, truck, or SUV for a zero-emissions electric vehicle. Some buyers would find his offer persuasive. Yet Biden's goal is a daunting one. Even if Congress approves his $2.3 trillion infrastructure plan, along with its incentives, it would take many years to replace enough internal combustion vehicles with EVs to make a huge dent in tailpipe emissions. Research shows that each EV sold does cut emissions, but it could take a couple of years for an EV to reach that point if coal is used to generate power to recharge the vehicle, said Bruce Belzowski, a retired University of Michigan transportation researcher who runs a company that studies the auto industry's future. If you don't start somewhere, you're never going to get anywhere, Belzowski said. Every electric vehicle that you sell is going to be a net positive for the environment. The Biden administration didn't offer specifics on just how much car buyers would receive to trade in their vehicles, but it plans to spend $174 billion over eight years on EVs. That figure includes incentives for consumers, grants to build 500,000 charging stations, and money to develop U.S. supply chains for parts and minerals needed to make batteries. The biggest incentive, likely, will be an expansion of the electric vehicle tax credit, now $7,500, which is phased out after an automaker sells 200,000 battery electric vehicles. Tesla and General Motors have exceeded the cap. Nissan is getting close. The rebates and charging stations address two key reasons why many consumers are worried about switching to electric vehicles, said Jeff Schuster, president of global forecasting for LMC Automotive, an industry consulting firm. Combined, he predicts that the incentives would help elevate EV sales from about 358,000 this year to over 1 million by 2023 and up to 4 million by 2030. If Biden's plan succeeds and EV sales take off, shortages of computer chips, metals used to build batteries, and a lack of battery factory capacity could leave the industry falling behind at buyer demand, at least for a couple years, Schuster said. Even with such added spending, people in general will likely drive less in the future because in the aftermath of the pandemic, many companies will allow a combination of work from home and office work. That will make some people even more reluctant to replace their vehicles. Something happened today. At a location and point in time, a person affected an event for a reason or number of reasons using means available to them at the time. After more than two months of living in temporary housing, Vice President Kamala Harris will soon be able to unpack and unwind at her official residence on the grounds of the U.S. Naval Observatory. Simone Sanders, senior advisor and chief spokesperson for the vice president, tweeted Thursday that Harris and her husband, Doug Emhoff, will move into the official vice presidential residence next week after some repairs are completed. The repairs included maintenance on the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system, replacing chimney liners, and refurbishing some of the hardwood floors in the 19th century Victorian house, Sanders said. Officials said it would be easier to do the work while the house was unoccupied after former Vice President Mike Pence and his wife moved out. District of Columbia police recently arrested a man near the vice president's official residence on a weapons charge. And now for this week's cooking segment. Cooking segment. Today, 
Our celebrity chef is none other than the internationally renowned and celebrated Chef Jasper from Casper. Or is it Casper from Jasper? Uh, which one is it? Yep. Okay, I see. Well, so how shall I address you? Address me? What, do I look like a fed Xbox or something? What are you, stupid in your head? It's a possibility. Okay, so Chef Jasper, Casper, Casper, Jasper, what will you be making for us today? Well, today's speciality is gonna be Rocky Mountain Oysters Tartar. Uh, just for our viewers who may not be familiar, a Rocky Mountain Oysters are the organ meat harvested from the reproductive organs of a steer. It's bulls nuts, bulls nuts. Don't be such a snowflake about it. Tell the people the truth. That's the problem with you snowflake media types. Just tell it like it is. It's bulls nuts, yeah. And it ain't no steer neither. You can't get the balls off a steer because the ranchers already beat you to it. It's bulls nuts, snowflake. Okay, I see. Well, and tell us about the tartar element. How do you go about, well, the whole thing with the tartar is it ain't cooked. So you gotta get it fresh as you can. Well, I expect there ain't nothing fresher than, uh, well, you just gotta get you right up in there. And by that you mean, yep, I'm gonna sneak up behind that doggy, and before he knows it, I'm gonna face plant right in there with my chompers ahead of me, and just start munching away. You have got to be joking. If I'm a joking, I'm a choking. Yeah, you know what? I don't think our insurance covers this sort of thing. Chef, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to ask you to consider maybe something else. Oh, look, here comes one now. Let's get right up in there and chomp on that doggy. Wait, wait, what are you? No, 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 come back. Oh, for the love of, oh my God, he's doing it. This is tragic. No, please stop. Kids, do not try this at home. Make it stop, please. This is the worst thing I have ever witnessed. No, 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 no. Oh, the humanity. Oh, God. Casper, Jasper, Jasper, Casper, please, please. God, Casper, Jasper, Jasper, Casper, are you all right? Well, ain't nothing fresher than that. I just got two words for you. Worth it. And I have just two words for you. Get out. Yeah, I expect so. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so sorry. I promise you, nothing like that will ever happen again. Let's get back to the news. I'm Herman Hansen, and I promise nothing bad will ever happen again. You know what's kind of funny is I actually find myself sort of craving this stuff. No, 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 oh my God, what am I saying? Anyway. Some Alaska Costco shoppers said they've had their groceries stolen by ravens in the store parking lot. Matt Llewellyn said he was packing his groceries into his car in the parking lot of an Anchorage Costco when ravens swooped down in to steal a short rib from his cart, the Anchorage Daily News reported Friday. I literally took 10 steps away and turned around. Two ravens came down and instantly grabbed one of the packages, ripped it off, and flew off with it, Llewellyn said. Llewellyn said the piece of meat was about four by seven inches large, a sizable meal for a sizable bird. They know what they're doing. It's not their first time, Llewellyn said. They're very fat, so I think they've got a whole system there. And once he got back home, he noticed that one of the ravens had taken a poke at another rib, but did not rob it. I cut that meat out and I started marinating it and my wife said, that's gross. We should take it back, Llewellyn said. Costco actually took it back even we had started marinating them and gave us a full refund. Additional raven thief sightings have emerged on social media. My parents were minding their business after a shop and made it home with one less steak, Kimberly Waller wrote on Facebook. 
The bird snatched it right out of the pack in the parking lot. Anchorage resident Tamara Josie replied to Waller's post and referred to the ravens as calculating. She said ravens hovered her in an attempt to steal her groceries. I had two ravens, one that was on the car next to me and he kept squawking really loud, Josie said. He would sit on the car and stare at me, then hop next to the bed of the truck on the other side, and he kept going back and forth. The other raven was on the ground. He kept trying to pull. I had these little mini melons you have in the mesh baggies. He kept trying to grab the netting and pull my melons off the cart. A raven started to fly in a circle around Josie until she got them to scram. He was waiting for another opportunity to grab the melons off the cart, but they were never deterred, she said. They just stayed posted, waiting for their next opportunity to steal something out of my cart. They are very dedicated to their mission, she added. A manager at an Anchorage Costco declined to comment to the newspaper about the Raven Thieves. The Anchorage Audubon Society tallies the Raven population every December. The group reported 923 common ravens in 2018, 621 in 2019, and 750 birds in 2020. Rick Sinat, a former wildlife biologist with the State Department of Fish and Game, said hundreds of ravens fly to Anchorage in the winter for food. After winter turns to spring, most of the ravens leave, Sinat said. But before they do, the ravens stick around to pluck assorted meat, fruit, and vegetables. For years, decades, they've watched people in the parking lots of grocery stores with all this food, Snot said. They know what a piece of fruit looks like in a grocery cart because they've seen it on the ground or seen it in a garbage can. A piece of the Wright brothers' first airplane is on Mars. NASA's experimental Martian helicopter holds a small swatch of fabric from the 1903 Wright Flyer, the space agency revealed Tuesday. The helicopter, named Ingenuity, hitched a ride to the Red Planet with the Perseverance rover arriving last month. Ingenuity will attempt the first powered controlled flight on another planet no sooner than April 8. It will mark a Wright Brothers moment, noted Bobby Brown, director for planetary science at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. The Carillon Historic Park in Dayton, Ohio, the Wright's hometown, donated the postage-sized piece of muslin from the plane's bottom left wing at NASA's request. The swatch made the 300 million mile journey to Mars with the blessing of the Wright brothers' great-grand-niece and great-grand-nephew, said park curator Steve Lucht. NASA's four-pound helicopter will attempt to rise 10 feet into the extremely thin Martian air on its first hop. Up to five increasingly higher and longer flights are planned over the course of a month. The material is taped to a cable beneath the helicopter's solar panel, which is perched on top like a graduate's mortarboard. For now, Ingenuity remains attached to the rover's belly. A protective shield dropped away over the weekend, exposing the spindly, long-legged chopper. The helicopter airfield is right next to the rover's landing site in Jezero Crater. The rover will observe the test flights from a distant perch before driving away to pursue its own mission, hunting for signs of ancient Martian life. Rock samples will be set aside for eventual return to Earth. And that's all we have time for. For Puppet News, I'm Hannibal Merman. Good night.